Welcome to another episode of Batshit Badasses. Hey, badasses! We like to call out periodically our listeners who have written us about their mental health struggles and triumphs. Uh, this is for Wednesday, September 13th. We're recording this. Uh, we'll probably drop this Friday. And usually we record at night and have some scotch, but uh, we're recording in the afternoon now. Yeah, so I don't know how entertaining this episode is going to be. Well, you know Neither one make- of us are intoxicated. You know what it makes me think of? <laughs> What's that? Gonna find my baby, gonna, gonna hold her tight, tight, gonna have some afternoon delight. My motto's always been, when, when it's right, right, it's right. Why wait until the middle of a cold, dark night when everything is... I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know any of the words. Uh, and we'll probably get sued. Just yep, there we go. Uh, <laughs> copyright. All right, yep. here we go. All right, the first one comes in from Amanda. Amanda says, I loved this perspective as a wife of someone with bipolar Ooh, another perspective I'd love to hear from is y'all's wives. <laughs> you know, we've tried. <laughs> we've tried. We've tried. We really have. And, you know, uh, as we grow in popularity, may- maybe, I um, I don't yeah. know. I- I'll be honest. M- Mandy um, is listening to the podcast, but because of how close she is to all the stuff that we're talking about, and obviously me, sometimes she has trouble listening to it all. Yeah. 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 Uh, Shannon does not listen. Mm. Um think for a similar reason yeah uh, as mandy has uh issues with it um and yeah yeah so that's that we're sorry working amanda <laughs> we're working on it <laughs> uh odetti writes uh it would be nice if you give your point of view about the post-diagnosis phenomenon to give secretly or not and non-stop diagnosis for disorders or mental illness to everything that moves Ooh. that does happen it I, does it does uh, especially with self-diagnosis or people diagnosing their friends outside of the medical community. Right. Someone being like, I am sure they are ADHD sure. or I know I'm bipolar. Which tr- we've talked about before. If you think that, go get fucking help. Right. See, that's the thing. Like, Odetti, I, I hear you. There, there, This can be a real you know, flashpoint. Um, personally, I feel, and this is just my opinion, if you feel like you have something – if you know someone who feels like they have something and you want to label it, fine. But if you're labeling it, that means you're seeking help for it and getting it professionally diagnosed after the fact, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think, I think it does, so. right? I because think so. if it's, if you should not be afraid of saying, hey, I'm depressed. Yeah. You should not be afraid of that. You should not be afraid of, you know, um, commenting on your uh delusions you know being like i'm feeling delusional right now or there a lot of these thoughts i'm having are delusional um and if these are the case and you want to label it yourself or your friends end up labeling you then go talk to someone get professional help but everyone's sitting there going i'm depressed well are you talking to anyone about it nope yeah i'm just gonna be depressed and even if it's not clinical depression Mm -hmm. uh talk to a therapist about it you know this would be a good time to bring up the fact that uh, Ooh, that right. shit is now sponsored by BetterHelp. How cool is that, you guys? Yeah, BetterHelp is a service uh, that I have actually signed up for. I have my first therapy appointment next week. Oh, that's what you got to talk about it. We're gonna we got to oh, do an episode all about it. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. But one of the interesting things about BetterHelp, there's a huge questionnaire that you fill out uh, when you start to get you the right therapist. So, however you want to communicate with someone uh, yeah you the can, problems you're looking for you can do t- you can communicate via text even yeah, you, don't you don't even need even to call to somebody yeah. um, which is awesome and hey I, I want to bring this up too when brad and i started this podcast one of the ways to spread the word about your podcast is to look for people to cross promote with or to find sponsorship and we specifically didn't want to do that because we didn't want this podcast to come across like it was some sort of cash grab for us, right. like we're trying to uh, monetize our mental illness, because that's not what this is at all. Gross. Gross. <laughs> yeah, really <laughs> gross. Um, but in seeing what BetterHelp offers and knowing that a lot of our listeners I almost feel like they're on the fence about talking to someone. We get so many people writing. Yeah. Saying that they're they're not currently in therapy or they've never done therapy, they're not mm-hmm. sure about it. Or people who are in more rural areas. Right. That's a hard word to say. Rural, 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 rural. Uh, areas and um, they don't have the kind of access right. to mental health care or, that they should. Or even cost. I mean, you're talking about one session with someone in L.A. is 
four hundred bucks an hour. Oh yeah, yeah, four hundred bucks. Who's got that money? You know, yeah. I don't. To, to do it weekly. Oh which right, you weekly, should. exactly. Yeah. It's uh, it's very fortunate. I'm very fortunate that a lot of mine is now covered. Thank God by the plan I switched to. But a beautiful thing about BetterHelp is it's cheaper than that, and you'll get ten percent off if you use our code, which is uh, BetterHelp.com backslash batshit. Yep. Yeah. So do it. And uh, you know what? Uh, very cool of them to be okay with the fact we're called batch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was we gotta send in an ad to get approved. And I'm sitting there going, they know our show, right? Because I would hate for them to check in on us in six months and be like, uh, maybe not. <laughs> These guys say fuck a lot. <laughs> a lot of fucks in this episode. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um yeah, so Adetti, those are our thoughts. Uh, right back in, let us know what you think to our response. Uh, Tracy, it's hard to hear you compare vets from past wars and current military conflicts. Apples to oranges. Vets from Iraq, recent wars are just as traumatized as those of past wars. Totally agree. Yeah, that's true. And you know what? Our, our perspective on that, uh, when we talked about that in that episode, might be more informed by the access to mental health care today. Yes, agree. Which isn't great, mm -hmm. but you know, if you were coming back from, say, World War II or Vietnam, you had nothing. Yeah, zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had no support at all. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have awareness back then. Yeah. And again, uh, we're not saying that the people who went through World War II versus the people who were in Iraq or Afghanistan uh, went through any more or less trauma than the other. We were just stating it from. A uh, a time period, I think, is the best way to look yeah, at it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the stereotype of Vietnam vets is, you know, how many of them ended up homeless, yeah, and you know, things like that, which were were real problems. Right. That I think, not not that they don't occur today, but they've been addressed to a better measure, right? Or I, you, I know a lot of vets uh, have issues with the VA and whatnot, so I'm not saying that these problems <laughs> have been no solved not by at any all. means but but it's also i mean look at the way that some vietnam vets were portrayed in films back then yeah. i mean like rambo i rambo was thinking that was a vietnam vet and that was a huge yeah. thing how he was ostracized from the community he tried to pass through because they viewed him as like a homeless vagrant from the vietnam war yeah you know and yeah they weren't vietnam vets weren't regarded nobody said thank you for your service right now i'm not saying that there aren't uh vets today that might be uh without homes that might be wandering through a community and get the same terrible service or treatment but i, I haven't seen a movie about it or haven't seen them featured in a movie like that back like it was back then yeah it's not as much of a uh like a cultural touchstone right right and that's probably part of the issue too maybe totally. it should be maybe it should be but yeah tracy no way are we saying uh modern war wars versus wars from 100 years ago or better or worse all war sucks and all every soldier has gone through horrible trauma yeah what yeah. is it good for absolutely nothing say it again <laughs> We're, we're going to turn to a karaoke podcast. Yeah, yeah. Is that a thing? We should make it a thing. Bat shit, karaoke, <laughs> and mental health. Yep. Uh, so uh, Yolanda writes, uh, I wasn't in the army, but growing up in South Africa, I was uh, armed, robbed, and carjacked by the age of 21. That's what brought me to the USA. I wonder if that uh, led to my bipolar 2. I'm 39, was diagnosed in May. I mean, yeah. That, you know, that kind of stress on your brain when you're young. I mean, when you're 21, your brain's still yeah. developing. My, my sister got held up at gunpoint years oh, really? ago. Yeah, yeah, years ago. And I'm sure that's had uh, an effect on her mental health. Obviously, it's changed her whole outlook. I mean, the way she interacts with people on the street, the way, you know, she has a gigantic dog now. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's I, I would not be surprised if that might have led to um, or affected um, your illness, Yolanda. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't be surprised at all. And I'm sorry that happened to you. That absolutely sucks. Uh, absolutely sucks. Although I do hear parts of South Africa are absolutely beautiful. Jessica loved it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, she talked about that, didn't yeah. she? Yeah, that's She right. went swimming with sharks. Well, that's, well, that's just <laughs> dumb. Uh, <laughs> you're not designed for the water, <laughs> Jessica. I don't care how skinny you are. <laughs> Uh, what actually you think of that Kevin Spacey movie? Did which one? Swimming with Sharks. Is that, I've never seen that movie. Oh, man, you it, would love it. Is it really good? Yeah, so Kevin Spacey plays a uh, uh, an agent in Hollywood. Oh, God. He's your stereotypical, like, abusive agent. Mm -hmm. And Frank Whaley's his assistant. He's finally had enough, so he breaks into his house and ties him up <laughs> and spends the evening being like, here's everything you do wrong. <laughs> oh, interesting. All right. Oh, I'm the, Talk I'm about mental that. health. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's a good one. Hmm. Um, 
who do we have next? We have uh, Coley. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with obsession uh, from our obsession episode. Mm. But I was curious how to reach out to you guys about problems I have personally faced and maybe uh, an episode of the podcast could talk about. Well, you can always you, write us. You just did it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, we actually can't respond to those messages on Spotify. Which is super frustrating. Yeah. I and I'm sorry that. about that. But um, you can find us on uh, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Um, um, you have a website. We have a website. Yeah, uh, batshitpodcast.com. Yeah. And we have an email form on there. So, yeah, you could totally uh, send us a message through there. We, I, we'd love to hear what you're going through. And if we can do an episode to help address that. Happy to. Yeah. Happy to. Absolutely. It helps us think of ideas about things to talk about. Yeah. And we love <laughs> we love hearing from you guys. Yeah. And uh, there's a Spotify link. And I think the link shows up on other services, too, if you're lis- listening on Apple Podcast or whatnot. Um, but you can leave us a voice message. Oh, yeah. Those and, have been so cool. Yeah. We absolutely love those. And we, we can play them on the show if you're cool with it. Yeah. And uh, those, those are a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, know this. If you do write into us, we do tend to mention you in uh, segments like this. So if there's something you don't want shared, that's absolutely fine. Just mention it in your message. Yeah. And we try to respond to everyone. But if you haven't heard back from us yet, um, uh, don't don't take it personally. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We'll try to try to get to you. We just Definitely get a not. lot of messages. Yeah, like it's was September 13th. And some of these messages are from the beginning of August. And that's in no way a comment on y'all. It's just... We've had personal things going on, yeah. or we've had a lot of stuff to record. Um, and a lot of depression. And a lot of depression. That's always fun. <laughs> uh, okay, we've got Morgan's next. As a cursed soul with bipolar and OCD, I found that writing down the thoughts step by step and then a logical counter to them helps. I used to be convinced if I left a lamp on, my family would die. Yeah, uh, Morgan, I'm the same way in terms of writing down my daily activities and my my process from going from one thing to another like every morning I wake up and I take out a note card and I'm like I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this and this is how this all fits within my day and I make sure not to overburden myself because sometimes if I don't do that all of a sudden yeah, I'm trying to take on 80 million things and I feel like I forgot this one thing which is going to fuck up everything else so um yeah I get it and I think that's a great um uh, coping mechanism when I first got diagnosed, I, I haven't kept up with it. I haven't done it in a while. I should probably get back to it. But um, one of the the best tools I used was a mood journal. Right. So I keep track of my moods and write down things that happen during the day. You know, or if I had extremes in moods or delusional thinking, I would try to pinpoint it. Be like, well, here's what's happened recently. Maybe this was a trigger. Mm. And it's helped me understand what some of my triggers are, too. So, yeah, yeah highly recommend. Yeah. Uh, maybe also throw out that lamp. <laughs> worst comes to worst, get rid of the lamp. It's a cursed lamp. <laughs> cursed lamp. Could be a cursed lamp. <laughs> I don't think it is. Did you make a gypsy angle? <laughs> Ooh, I wouldn't I think, do that. I think gypsies actually do Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. I think that, yeah, the, that was... The Roma people. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Roma people? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good to know. Um, Yolanda writes again. Oh, is this Yolanda again? Oh, it's to... the same Yolanda. Yeah, thanks, Yolanda. Hey, Lou. Uh, to be honest, I didn't know I had delusions till after this podcast. I was totally the girl who thought if a guy just looked at me that he was madly in love with me. Oh my god! Erotomania. Erotomania, dude. Yeah, there it is. It's I, very like I'm. It's now that I know about it, mm-hmm. and you talk to people, it's surprisingly common. I'm sure it is. I'm yeah, sure it is. Much people with mental illness. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, I'm sorry, Yolanda. I hope um you have found a guy who is madly in love with you. Uh, I'm sure you're an amazing person who deserves that love. And I'm sorry that you went through that because, um, I like Brad was just saying, I'm sure a lot of people with mental illness yeah. are affected by that. It makes me feel bad. There was this friend we uh, in our friend group years and years ago, and she was like that. She thought every guy oh, really? had the hots for her, and like we were all just annoyed by her. And now I look back, and I'm like, no, she's probably – other other behaviors she had too. It's like she was definitely suffering from something. Something was going on, yeah. yeah. That's rough. Uh, okay, we got Scuba Steve. First of all, fantastic tag um, or handle. Before starting my antidepressant, antipsychotic cocktail, isolation was my go-to. If I didn't have to work, leaving the house was an option I'd never accept. Uh, hey, me too, Steve. Yeah, um, ditto. Yeah, nope. Uh, isolation was the way for me to go. and Still is sometimes yeah. for me. Yeah, and th- the thing with me is I, I, because I now know that that's the case, I purposefully... 
I, 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 again, I talked about just a minute ago how I write down um, what I'm doing during the day. Sometimes I will literally say, like, write down, uh, hide in bed for two hours. And then once those two hours are up, like, I have to put that deadline on it for me. Because yeah. otherwise I'll just like, okay, I'm in bed all day. And that's just what it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I've it's, lately, I don't, I don't feel a lot of the other things that come with depression. I mean, I think I have, I'm in like low key depression. But I've been going to bed about 10.30 at night, not getting up until after 9 a.m., mm. and then I still have to take a nap in the middle of the day. Yeah. And it's just like, like I just want to be, like, bed is the only place that makes sense. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's not even like you're sleeping all that time. Yeah, right? sometimes I'll just lay there. I'll just lay there. I'll play my Switch, or I'll read a book, or something like that. Yeah. Why is bed so great? I don't know. Bed is freaking amazing. Hey, by the way, if uh, anyone out there who loves bed, if you don't have a weighted blanket, you are Ooh, missing yeah. out. Do you have a weighted blanket? Yeah. Oh, dude. They're I'm the telling best. I Yeah. Mine, mine's 20 pounds because I'm not a small guy, but they make them as light as like five. And I originally got the idea because we'd go to the dog park and there was a dog there who would wear a weighted vest. And I'm like, oh, is your dog wearing that because you need to tire him out and he needs exercise? And he's like, no, 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 he's just anxious all the time. And this calms him down. And I'm like, I wonder if there's something like that for people. <laughs> you know, it, it probably activates something in your brain that makes you feel like you're cuddling. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, or being embraced in yeah. some way. Yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah, uh, yeah get away to blanket. Um, and I'm sorry, Scuba Steve. Although I like saying Scuba Steve. Scuba Steve's nice. Yep. Although he has two Bs in it, so maybe it's Scubba Steve. Scubba! Uh, Morgan writes, hey, I, have Morgan. A I have a support system of some friends who I use as a soundboard anytime I need to be grounded. Works out most of the time unless we're all manic. Boom. If you got those friends, yes, all the time. Use those yeah. friends. Awesome, Morgan. Good for you. Good yeah. for you for sharing it. You know, something I've had a problem with uh, that I've noticed with friends of my age is they all, when I got diagnosed, were immediately um, sympathetic and wanted mm -hmm. to have coffee and talk about it. And then they've all just kind of disappeared. <laughs> really? Like yeah. you keep reaching out to them and they're not responding right now? or Yeah, I mean, they don't ghost me, but it's it's just like, you know, yeah, we're done, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that's because a lot of people, I think, view this as a short-term illness. Yeah. Right? They're like, oh, Brad's depressed right now, but he'll be fine in two weeks. Well, and again, specifically, it's specifically our age. Like, people who are younger have mm. a completely different view on mental health. Sure. And I don't even mean, like, I'm not talking, like, Gen Z or something. I'm talking, you know, we're in our 40s. And, uh, God, we're in our 40s. Don't say it. Why'd you uh, say it? Uh, everyone, it everyone clearly thinks we're 22. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The uh, the white in my beard right. is very twenty two. Um, Steve Martin at twenty two. Yeah. <laughs> um, I use colloquialisms yeah. from like nineteen ninety three. But so. I mean, people just under the age of thirty five, they mm -hmm. have a completely different outlook on mental health. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I also think that we are in our forties, so we all get caught up in our own crap too. Yeah, and which isn't an excuse at all. It's just another factor, right? Yeah, yeah. You have a lot more going on. Yeah. Uh, um, also, go ahead. Read the last line. Okay, yeah, and so Morgan adds, P.S., singer Brad is greater than actor Brad. You know, you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to give Brad, like, a Shakespeare monologue and have him perform it on the show, and then you all can compare and give yeah. us your thoughts. I oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. Yay! Adam's happy. Makes Adam happy. Compare that to Afternoon Delight. Tell me what you think. God. Shakespeare, Afternoon Delight. Rose. You know. right. uh, Coley is back. Uh, absolutely. In arguments, I do not consider the other side and always think that I'm right. I'm inconsiderate of my partner's feelings and fights sometimes, which definitely makes me an asshole. Yeah, you shut down, right? Like you... You shut down. You also have that grandiosity. It's yep. Like, like you're a temporary narcissist. Yep. And it's uh, you can't even hear the validity of the other person's argument. Yeah. It, it's funny because Mandy in the past has said, like, why don't you get heated in arguments like really heated i'm like because i stop listening like uh, why don't you fight more i'm like i don't want to fight because the minute i start getting emotions involved i stop listening and i think that's the case for a lot of people yeah there's kind of a detachment yeah i think i think it's one or the other it's detachment or heightened emotional response yeah there's no middle ground yeah which is sucky um i'm sure a lot of you out there have felt the same thing i don't even know how much of that is uh 
can be tied to my mental illness and how much of that is just it's hard to your say. emotional I mean, your emotions being you know out of control i try to blame all this stuff on, on my mental illness and i don't I, in reality i sometimes wonder like is that my mental illness or it's, is it just me dude we did a whole episode about it and yeah. you know, asshole or illness it's an interesting one yeah. go back and listen and you to guys it. know how much i hate lamps yeah he fucking <laughs> hates lamps <laughs> Okay. Uh, oh, who was it that had the lamp issue? Oh, we have there? to go back to lamps. Hold on. It was um, Morgan. Morgan had a lamp issue. Morgan, call me. I'll deal with your <laughs> lamp issue. Uh, uh, all right. Who's next? Uh, Emberglade. Uh, my bipolar and BPD make me fight with my partners when I don't want to. I get butt hurt and bitter and lash out, and then I have to pick up the pieces when my mood stabilizes. Uh-huh. God, I, I know what you mean. I had a recent kind of wave of like i guess you'd call it rapid cycling okay like like depression anxiety mania depression anxiety mania and um i was so sensitive to everything and like paranoid about stuff and uh every little thing i took personally like this person hates me or you know they're they're uh you know completely done with with our friendship or like whatever and it was just like ups and downs uh with it and uh, I think that's kind of common, like that oversensitivity. Mm. Um, you know, we've talked before, the, the amygdala of the bipolar brain is larger than the general population. One of the things the amygdala governs, in addition to emotional responses, is the fight or flight mechanism. Mm-hmm. And so I think we're probably more apt to go into fight or flight than most people. Um, and, you know, we just, we feel things bigger. Yeah. Why well, go to a five when you can go to a ten? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. Go hard or go home. Yeah, that's man. it. Right, baby. We ain't got time <laughs> for that middle ground bullshit. Um, yeah, that's uh that and that can be really hard to hear and uh it sucks. Um so Ember, thank you for writing in. Um oh here we go. Lu- Lulu's got something similar. Lulu says, get easily irritated, so I might shout and get angry. Like, no, I don't mean that. You are fucking stupid. Yep. <laughs> in a bad day, I spit bullshit at everyone, and I feel they 100% deserve it. Uh, you know, honestly, Lulo, I don't know who you're hanging out with. Maybe they do deserve it. But I, <laughs> I mean, they do. Fuck those guys. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, I hear you. Like like we were just saying, you go to an 11, and there's, yeah, yeah and it, it sucks because you shut down. You stop listening. No matter what anyone says, you respond with, you know, uh, uh, the anger and bitterness and I get this thing too. Yeah. I, I don't know if other people do this, but I try to stay even keeled. Okay. Right. And try not to get into fights and blah, blah, blah. And then I get to a tipping point where I'm like, am I letting myself be walked all over? Oh yeah. I need to stand up for myself right, right, right. and then I'm an asshole. Right. How much, how much is this as me trying to stay level and how much of this is me not fighting hard enough to get what I want? Yeah. Right. Because, and they always say, if you want something, you got to fight for it. I'm like, yeah, but where's that line for me personally? Like, yeah. where's that feeling of like, I want this, I've earned this, or I deserve this. And how much of that is my mania being like, I'm amazing. It's, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Ugh. Um, ooh, scoop is back. Uh, morphine <laughs> habit came around after my father died of cancer. I went back to work after everything shut down in 2020. Hospice left me with bottles of liquid morphine and plenty of pills. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, Scuba. I'm I'm sorry you went through that. I'm hoping that you know you're getting treatment for it, and I'm hoping that um, you've come out the other side. Uh, I know one, you know, you're never truly done with addiction um, <clears throat> or habit, uh, but you know, here's hoping that you're fighting as hard against that as you are against your mental illness, because clearly you're listening and working. Yeah. Yeah, I think that probably came from our uh, second drugs episode about yeah. self-medication. Totally. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, p- please keep fighting, buddy. Uh, next we got Lulo. We did Lulo. Oh, we did Lulo. I'm sorry. It's Miss G. Miss G. Time. You guys are hilarious. I can totally relate. Well, thank you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> This is my first podcast, but so far, so great. This is my first one time doing it. It is one, true, so yeah. I've been a guest on some. But. No, it's funny. I don't really listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. I'm not, we you... probably shouldn't admit that. Oh. <laughs> Ooh-doo. <laughs> uh, this stuff sucks. Yep. Yep. And it's hard. I'm glad to know there's more uh, more of me out there. Please keep sharing. You are not alone, Miss G. You're mm-hmm. definitely not alone. Yeah. If you've 
uh, if you could see our numbers of listeners, I mean, just the amount of people who who listen regularly, it, it shocks us. We're close to we're close to twenty five thousand downloads. Yeah, twenty five thousand. It's yeah. I, it, it, hooray! Honestly, hooray for for the everyone in this community who's listening and sharing and fighting because that's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, and it's a shame that so many people need it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. But I'm from glad. both sides. A lot of our listeners are people who don't suffer from a mental illness, but have someone in their life who does. Yeah, and you need to hear this as much as anybody else. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. We've got Queen Busy Bee. Love all your episodes. Thank you for sharing your lives. Thank you, Queen Busy Bee, for clearly taking time out of your life, which is probably busy, to write that message. So thank you. Uh, and then we got Ember Glade again. That's something I have to do a lot, both being bipolar and recovering from an ED, mostly journaling, and finding time to listen to podcasts like these. Keep it up, boys. Aw. And we, yeah, journaling. There it is again. Yeah. Yeah. There it's, it is again. It's a, it's a common technique. Um, yeah. You know, I sometimes take that to the extent of, like, emailing people yeah. about what's going on. Like, hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. Um, you know, here's here's what's going on with my mental health. Yeah. And, uh, and then feeling after I hit send, like, man, why am I dumping on other people? <laughs> but, but, you know, an email's nice because yeah, they can look know, at it at their, their leisure. Exactly. And you can take to... the time to, to, form, uh, uh, to, to form your thoughts coherently into something. And well, like sometimes down. coherently. Well, sometimes, <laughs> hopefully coherently, let's be honest. Sometimes I write it out of mania. And oh, it boy. makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, okay, that last thing, everybody, we've gotten a bunch of positive responses to um, the suggestion of meeting up for batshit badass meetups, uh, which is amazing, and we love that, and yeah. we're going to start looking into that. Um, we're starting to get into that time of year, which is holiday heavy, and we're going to be traveling, as I'm sure a lot of y'all are. But especially as this podcast keeps growing, I think early 2024 might be a really cool opportunity time to yeah. do that. Yeah, especially yes. after the holidays when everyone's going to be depressed and oh, manic God. all the time. <laughs> People <laughs> depressed during the holidays. Oh God. Um, yep. Yeah, any of you who are in the Los Angeles area and would be interested in a batshit badasses meetup, yeah, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, again, you can write us at uh, batshitpodcast.com. Yep, and uh, we'd love to organize something. Yeah, uh, but if there's a lot of interest, right? But we're, that's we need the numbers, right? Yeah. Like as much as we'd love to meet each and every one of you on a one on one basis, you know, like. I want this community to be a community event. So, like, yeah. let's get 30 heads in a room. Let's get yeah. 40 heads in a room. I mean, and we've even talked about starting it off uh, recording an episode live. Oh, that'd be and, so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have talked about that. I and forgot. then everybody can have a drink if you're so inclined. Yep. And we can all just hang out and chat with each other about our yeah. craziness. I'm not bringing my good scotch, though. Y'all, no, y'all drink all my good <laughs> scotch and I can't get it all the time. So, and you know, if you're in another city, and would like to organize a batshit badasses meetup. Also write us. Yeah, write and, us. And we'll see what we can do to we'd, help. We'd love to come out, you know, wherever. Uh, you know, if if there is the community, we will come to it. Yeah. Yeah. If you build it, we will come. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brad's Kevin Costner. I'm, uh, oh, what's his Ray name? Ray Liotta. I'm Ray Liotta. Yeah. All right. Ray Liotta. <laughs> nice. I mean, your, Shoot your, us your, Joe. <laughs> your career was bigger, but still. <laughs> uh, thank you, Batshit Badasses. Y'all are the best. Uh, keep writing us in so we can keep making these. Um, we love you. Keep fighting.